Okay, I'm Stuart Fennick, I'm humanfrailty.com.au and we're at the back of the Enmore Theatre. We're here with Jack Howard, how are you? Good, very well, thank you. Free gig, after an amazing gig last night. Looking forward to see, see if we can top it tonight. I, I think we can, I think the audience are, are ready. We've seen a lot of them preparing at the pub up the road. Well, the, the nice thing about these shows is it's good to be back inside. Much as those, the outdoor shows are terrific, sonically and the intensity when you're back inside a room is something else. You know, the sing-alongs of the crowd last night and just everyone the way we played was, so, it was fantastic. So it's good to be back. We, we sure felt that last night. So, um, so what songs are you enjoying the most playing out there? Uh, well, probably the obscure ones. I mean, I'm loving Stuck On You and This Morning. Um, in fact, there's a couple of slightly obscure ones that we're going to do, which we haven't done. really did want them up, yes. Yes, uh, but, you know, we yeah. got close. But anyway, we're not here to talk about how That's right. We, we're to talk, here to talk about me. Yes, yes, of course. So we, <laughs> we, we, we have, a, have a, a, few, a few questions from the fans. Gary asked, was rock and roll trumpet player always on your plans in life? No, uh, no. Rock and roll trumpet player was a major lift in Albuquerque. I have to say, back in 1981, I was going on heavily playing orchestras, playing um, deep bands, playing, you know, whatever, musicals, lots of and um, all sorts of like youth chamber orchestras, just like, heaps of classical music. And that's where I knew Jeremy and Michael from, and the other two original Hunter Swan players, which was Nigel Crocker and Andy Lynn. And there was also a fellow called Chris Miller. But now, most of us came from like orchestras. So that's what I was doing. I had no idea what I was going to do. I died. probably wouldn't, later, wouldn't have made a living out of classical music. But yeah, I was going to see bands all the time. My mate Mark Birchard, he was, um, you know, a good mate down in Melbourne. We just used to go out four or five nights a week to the ballroom, the Macy's, the Oxford, and we'd just see bands. That's what we did. And I lived down in the far northern suburbs and I'd drive in the HD Holden, the one that said Say Goodbye, by the way. Uh, that's yes. my car. It's not Mark's car, it's my car. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we're here, we've got uh, Day of the Dog, out the only, dog. only three weeks' time. Yeah, April 18th, which is actually Good Friday, so it's a very good Friday. Less than three weeks. Yeah, it is less than three weeks now. Yeah. Now, you've surrounded yourself again with a series of fantastic players. Um, introduce your, your band that you have with you now. My band? Well, oh, sorry, there's something about to happen here. A car crash. It's just about to happen. Um, my band, um, well, I, my long, my longest time, my longest serving compadre, like my serving is Nicky Del Rey, who I've been mean, known since way back in the 80s. He's used to play bands called King Jerklues and Intoxica. Fantastic guitarist, very kind of country oriented, but he's one of those riff meister guitarists. So like we'll be working on a song, we'll come up with a song, and he'll just come up with his magic opening riff, as good guitarists do. It's like, bang, there's the hook for the opening of the song. He'll do that all the time, he's fantastic. Great backing singer too, and he's, his backing, so backing vocals actually really shine on this side I'll try again and shut it down. Quite a big feature. I've got Ed Bates on pedal steel who came into the band about seven years ago and he's a legend that kind of goes way back to the seventies, back to the sports, which is, which is a famous band back, you know, an Australian band back in the day. But he kind of does all for the radio, was it? Yeah. The radio, yeah. yeah, all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Ed, I mean he's really old. <laughs> he's in his sixties. You know he's even older than us. He's um sixty four something like that, but he's like this magician on pedal steel, and he's like, when I haven't got a horn section, and I do use a horn section sometimes, um, when I haven't got a horn section, Ed's like the horn section, he's like this sonic orchestra behind me, he's amazing. Uh, Mark Ferry on the bass from the models, who's one of like, Australia's most well-known bass players in the Rock Wiz Orchestra, people know him probably the most, you know, primarily from there, uh, and he's just like, you know, together with Cal McHale, And then uh, you have a bunch of young guys on horns uh, who were just sons of a friend of mine and they started just doing a couple of residency gigs that we had in Melbourne and they played really, really well, they're only young, only 19, 20. And then uh, one of the guys from the band Sasquatch, Ron Morrison, came on for the record as well. And, uh, and he's tremendous.
was in the position, so it's very good, very happy. Yeah. I mean, uh, our fan Nathan, who I believe has been to a few of your concerts, actually asked uh, how you met all these people. You've, you've listed a few there through through bands and through friends, kids. And yeah, yeah, all sorts of all sorts of ways and means as you do. I mean, Cal and Mark, we have a band in Melbourne called the Models Super Orchestra, which yeah. is three of the guys from the Models, Sean, Andrew, and Mark. The legendary Billy Miller from the Ferrets, Don't Fall In Love, yes, yes. Uh, which is a very famous Australian song. In fact, it was the number one hit back in the 70s. Great song. And, uh, and I sing a few hundred songs with that band. We do quite a lot of fundraising shows. We do what I think of the Caravan Club. Yes. Um, and I sing, uh, I just sing Say Goodbye, Holy Grail, and sometimes throw your arms around. And that's a bit good, a bit very different the way we play them. Uh, it works well, it's actually really fun. Great. Yeah. Hey, uh, where does the concept of Day of the Dog come from? You know? Well, I mean, it's got a nice few meanings. You know, Day of the Dog, you know, every dog will have its day kind of thing. Uh, you know, I suppose I wouldn't say it's referring to me, but it's like, you know, you're kind of having your, you want your time in the sun and all that kind of stuff. Um, we're big dog lovers, Fee and I. We've got our dogs in, in fact, on the cover of the CD, the black dog. See the cover. Um, he's the owner's dog, my partner's dog, uh, Jet, and the dog on the other side, which is my Jack Russell, who passed away about a year ago. And in fact, the dog song, uh, I think I said this in the minor note somewhere, the dog song, the first time we played the dog song was on the day that he passed away. We had the Haddo River down at uh, Prince Wales. So that was actually the first time. So it was quite a moving first performance of that, um, of that song. And it just kind of fitted together, you know, the artwork was works really nicely, I think, you know, with the dogs, and just, it's just a nice theme for the record. You know, it's very yeah. domestic, I suppose, Day of the Dog, dogs are domestic, you know, I mean, all of my songs, you know, my lyrics are probably very domestic, yeah. orientated, small domestic dramas, you know. About, it's about, about our lives. Yeah. About our lives, small yeah. domestic mysteries, you know, it's that kind of vibe yeah. in my lyrics, I think, a lot. Okay. Yeah, well, we did the the pedal steel is quite prominent yeah. in, in the yeah. album, so you've seen the, the little bit of a change. How, how did that decision come about? Yeah. Well, look, I mean, when, when Ed started playing with us, um, uh, and like I say, pedal steel, I suppose, is traditionally associated with country music, and Nick already does bring a bit of a country flavour, and he does a lot of stuff with Ed. They've played yeah. a lot together over the years. But Ed kind of brings something, as I said, beyond that. He's, got a, he's a real sonic kind of musician, and I actually love that. I mean, it's a, I love Barry Palmer in you know, Harvest yeah. because he's just such a sonic musician. He gets the great sounds, yeah. uh, and I love that in people that I play with. But they just, you know, do more than just play the notes. You know, there's just this, this, these textures that they introduce into the music that just takes it, you know, I mean, uh, uh, in another direction. The, the track on the record that seems to be, you know, that people seem to be digging is the Lark Sense. Track three. I was going to ask you about that, that and actually. Okay. Mark has mentioned that, Barry's mentioned that, Rob Hurst has mentioned that as being the kind of the track. It is you know, very interesting. I mean, yeah. Where did the Lark Ascent come from? I mean, it's well, that's a funny lyric there, actually. The Lark, the Lark Ascent, well, the Lark Ascending was a very famous piece of um, English music by Paul Williams. Yes. It's a beautiful, beautiful song, very uh, kind of Malaysian. Celebratory in a, in a in a slightly 
maybe ironic way because you hear, if you heard that chorus on, on your own, you think, oh, it's a love song. Yeah. No? Which I kind of like. Um, I mean, that, that, that was, we had a residency at the Prince of Wales. And because we were doing it each week and we had a limited number of songs, I just wanted to introduce new songs. You know, just yeah. try something out, try something out. You know? People were going with it. So I in three chords, and three chords, and this is what we're playing, this is the tempo, these are the chords. actually worked out really well. But the uh, a band that I'd seen just before that was the Tedeschi Trucks band, so the Blues Fest. Yeah, yeah. And kind of big, you know, slightly gospel American kind of rock, you know, that kind of, it's got a little bit of that feel about it as well. Rich oh. Holland section. But uh, yeah, look, I do like the Some of them are going to be uh, controversial. Uh, but perhaps even ridiculous, we'll see. But okay. uh, this, uh, look, Gary is interested in the trumpet players that inspired you to deal with those. Um, uh, well, look, I guess in terms of trumpet, I mean, there are all sorts of different music that inspired me. I wouldn't call myself a trumpet player, a horn player. You know, I mean, I wasn't just thinking to trumpet music. But look, the, the, the trumpet player that went very kind of hand in hand with other dark music that I love, like Tom Waits, you know, people like that, who um, play some good music like the Bells, you know, it was a sort of dark, rich kind of form into it that, that I loved. Um, so Miles Davis, um, that's probably about it really. I mean, others others of his time, like uh, Lee Morgan, um, yep. Clark Terry, Trumpeters, Cliff Brown from the 50s, but really, I mean, it's more of a, you know, I put Tom Waits down as more of a... Uh, Stephen, Stephen is interested. When I mean, you mentioned before uh, Nigel Rocker and Andy Lynn and, and, and the original members who are in there with the Horns of Contempt, um, do you know where they are now? Or what they're doing? Uh, uh, Andy Lynn, uh, who was a brilliant trumpet player, a brilliant young trumpet player. He played on the early stuff. He played on Moin Clopping, which was on the first EP. He played on uh, Stranger, and I think he played on. I think there was some brass on Boo Boo Kiss. From memory, I may be mistaken there. I'd have to go back and listen. My faulty memory. We also had a, a track called uh, Toe Track, and I think my memory's failing me. That's terrible. But anyway, he played on that early stuff, and he was in the early live sections. He's yeah. now in the. Uh, he went and started playing with the Scottish National Opera in Glasgow. And I think, oh, okay. I think he's still there. Um, Nigel Crocker is a freelance trombonist in Sydney. He plays at the Sydney Symphony a lot. Came down to Melbourne. And I saw him last year with Brandon Bird. Orchestra playing trombone, so it's a very, very good trombone. The other one is a bit more obscure, Chris Malerb. He was more just one of those kind of ballroom, kind of rock musicians, yeah. you know, horn players. Um, he was a good trumpet player, but he wasn't from the same scene as us, as the classical musicians. Yeah. You know, he, he kind of came in from another angle. So, yeah. so I, I honestly have no idea where he is or what he's doing. And. Uh, Actually, you mentioned tow truck. Did you try and get that on the set list for these uh, this round of concerts? Yes, so yes, yes. That was that was one that was mooted. Um, didn't quite get there. Didn't quite get there. I'm very happy we're playing Skin About Teeth. And just getting back to that. That's that's been really good fun to play. Because uh, we even back in the day we didn't play that that much. Yeah, we we pictured that there would be some sort of debate between Skin Our Teeth and Tow Truck. And, uh, well, I mean, there's uh, also Run Run Run, World of Stone, those songs as well. We have had a, a lot of requests from fans for Run Run Run. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, uh, look, you, we kind of have to pick one. They're a little exactly. bit interchangeable, you know, between yeah. our songs. So that you, you, know, you can't do all three. Oh, that would yeah. take up a whole set list. Well, the audience, no, well, the audience is just that. You can like, what are you doing for yeah. us? Yeah. Yeah. What you, this is song? Yeah. I thought you just played Holy Grail and throw your arms around you. And, and 50, <laughs> 50 of us hardcore fans. Uh, but you know, the most impossible question for last is: mm. you've played the most incredible selection of musicians.
musicians in Australia, sometimes I have the random music on and I hear this trumpet and I go, that sounds like Jack Allen. And it's something I didn't even realise you played in. Um, and you played, you know, the break, X, the living end, Pete Murray, and I'm, there's the, the, the models you mentioned earlier, and so many more. So the question that uh, Stephen's asking us... How much? It, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's going, who would be in your ultimate Aussie super rock group? Man, oh man, I'd have to think about that one. I might have to go away and think about that. Um, well, I... Um, that's a, that's a tough question. It's a rotten question. That's a tough question. I mean, I've, you know, I've played with Midnight Oil, I've played with Hunters and Hunters. That's pretty much the top of the list so far. Um, uh, that's a good question. It's good. I will have to, I mean, the finals might be nice. Um, but, no, no, I'd have to think about that it, one. Sorry. It's an, it's, that's a very poor answer. It, it's, it's a question broad with politics and music and heavy question really. Um, but anyway, a day of the dog out Good Friday. Yes, day of the dog out Good Friday. Uh, hopefully it will be in most of the shops, the, the smaller good record stores around. You can get it on Bandcamp through the website, the new website which Stu will be, will be pointing you to, www.jack-howard.com. You can get it there either digitally or on CD, not vinyl, not yet. I'm kind of thinking about that, but not just yet. Um, so, so you can get it there, and you can sample all the tracks there, you can have a good listen. iTunes, you'll be able to get it on iTunes, of course. Um, and we do the CD launches um, Friday, June 27th at the camp. Uh, I'm very looking forward to that. You got, got any more gigs planned? Yeah. Uh, the most immediate gigs at the moment we're playing the day after the Hunters Tour finishes, I don't know what I was thinking, is um, oh. Sunday, April 13th at the Retreat Hotel up in Brunswick, which would be good to get cracking. And then with uh, Nikki Del Rey and I doing three duo shows of Pure Pop on Friday nights, May the 18th, 25th, sorry, April 18th, 25th, and May the 2nd. So make sure you get on with those. Oh, thank you, Jack. Thank you, Stuart. Good to see you. And yeah. All the best out on stage there tonight. I'm sure it's going to be a, a vibrant and interesting crowd out there. I hope so. Thank you. Cheers. Hey, thanks.